complex ideas that, yes, it covers the whole of human civilization. Yeah, like Toynbee. Yeah, I've done the Toynbee thing for religious and philosophical history. Yeah, yeah. You met Toynbee, didn't you? Gosh, he, he was a great man. You've met so many incredible people, Your Majesty. I'm just in awe of this. And here you are finding time to talk to me. I can't believe it. Yeah, yeah. It's, uh, yeah. And the other thing I wanted to say is I've set up this Mary Magdalene Studies Association. I'm always busy setting up these kind of academic bodies. and That's why I need more secretaries, please. <laughs> but I do feel a strong resonance with the Mary Magdalene traditions. I know, Magdalene College, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, if there was a spare mastership going at Oxford, yeah, I, I would, I'd certainly consider it, like Dee used to consider whether, he, yeah. Yeah, don't send me to Manchester, though, please. <laughs> I couldn't, it's too cold up there. No, but Oxford I could cope with. Yeah, so anyway, this Mary Magdalene Studies Association, that, that I've set up here in France, we've had three annual meetings, having another one next year. And if you know anyone doing work on Mary Magdalene, in your circle, I mean, because you mix with vicars and theologians. There is that wonderful Anglican professor at Oxford who's just done a detailed study of her gospel. Yeah, yeah, no, absolutely. It's It should be in all the New Testaments. Look, please, Your Majesty, you know King James did the wonderful King James Bible. Can you please do a Queen Elizabeth's Bible? Only this time, can you add the gospels of, of St. Thomas and Mary Magdalene? So that the New Testament now has six Gospels. I, I know it seems a bit radical, but honestly, they ought to be in there. They're that important. And every Anglican in the world should be able to read these things. Yeah, it should be like a study Bible or something. And can you put in three books of Enoch as well into the Old Testament, so-called Old Testament, the Older Testament, we should call it. Yeah, the three books of Enoch. They're all, the first one is already in the, the um, Ethiopian Gospel, um, New, Old Testament. Yeah. And yes, it was that wonderful Scotsman brought brought the first book of Eth Enoch back from Ethiopia. Yeah. I know. I, I've done a detailed commentary on them, so I'd be, I'd be happy to edit this, this, the Queen Elizabeth's Bible, let's call it. So for the next thousand years, they'll look back on, on you as this great patron of learning, which is, of course, you are. Yeah, but some people don't realise that. They think you're just this sweet old lady that says platitudes at the Christmas message. They don't realise how feverish your brain is working away all the time to try and save your country and your commonwealth. I know. Well, that's the Christ link that we have, you see, and that's why I've always been happy to, you know, be, be in communion with your church. And But we have to make it a, a robust and intellectually watertight communion so that people of calibre can go on thinking and writing and reading in the future of our civilization, you know, on for the next, you know, foreseeable future. We, have, Yeah, yeah, my vision, like yours, is that of peace. You see, I think that's what Christ wanted. I think it's what Mary Magdalene wanted, yeah. And that's why I'm against Brexit. It's, it creates uncertainty, anxiousness, fear. You know, all the poor Europeans that have come to our country, Britain, and, and made lives and had families and got jobs, I know, what are they going to do, the Tories? Boot them all out? Ship them out over the, over the... It's shocking. No, no. And all the Brits that have gone to Europe, like me, you know, I live in the middle of France. It used to be Eleanor of Aquitaine's domain here. I love it. It's like, I call it South Sussex. It's, it's as beautiful as Sussex. And it's bigger. So we should be allowed to live here and be happy and work and do our thing. and Yeah. So, no, we've got to stop Brexit. It's a total nightmare. Um, <clears throat> and, and that's the love element of the... Of the it's, I call it anti-entropy or syntropy. Another way of talking about the metaphysics of, of, of peace is, is that we have to strengthen syntropic forces. I've just been with a brilliant Jewish intellectual from Israel, New York, called Michael Ben Eli. That's right. He runs a sustainability lab in, in New York. And he talks about this, this negative feedback loop the world's in because, yeah, the intellectuals have been hijacked by the warlords. The warlords are run by the military-industrial complex. They're run by the intelligence agencies. And they're run by the big financial houses. So everybody is, like, going down the plug hole slowly in this negative feedback loop. How can we solve the problems at a higher order, is what Michael was saying. 
That's the leap of faith. That's the kind of Gnostic vision of Mary Magdalene, Christ, to the, to the leaping, leaping towards love, is what I call it. <laughs> Sauté, yeah, in France, yeah, yeah. Well, that's why I set up the Mary Magdalene study. So, you know, I mean, look, if, if everything goes wrong and you need to escape, then you're always welcome in France here, Your Majesty. Yeah, if you want to abdicate, just, just come over here and join the Mary Magdalene Studies Association. We could do with someone of your wisdom and stature. And wouldn't that be great, a way of saying to the, you know, the, the Brexit nightmare people that actually you, you want to be part of civilization? Yeah. Oh, dear. Well, look, um, <clears throat> yeah, we, we can talk about that another time. I mean, I, haven't, I, I, I suppose I ought to just say formally, I'm also ringing on behalf of the Druid community. Um, I do have this status as, as Archdruid of the Peace Druids of Britain and Europe. Yeah, and we're, of course you know that, so that's fine. Um, and that's why Druid, you see, it means Dharma seer. Dharma is the ultimate truth in the Jain and Buddhist and Hindu faith. It's the only thing that matters, really, Dharma. And the Druid is simply someone that can see that. It's like a vision thing. I know, it's, see, it sort of comes all at once like a vision, but actually it takes years and years and years to cultivate that in the scene. Yes, yes, there's law. That's one thing. That's what lawyers do, and they get paid for it. Then there's this thing called Dharma, which is actually... Yeah, it's like the Torah for the Jews. It's the cosmic law that underpins the written law. Yeah, that's what the Kabbalah teaches, the, the, the inner, unwritten, oral transmission. Yeah. Yeah, Moses was an expert in that. Yeah, before the, <clears throat> the, before the law was written down, there was the Torah, the, un, the unwritable down. Yeah, that's what the Druids see, you see. And that's where I'm coming from in my comments on Brexit and all the rest of it, and the Commonwealth and Delhi. And... Yeah, yeah, that's, yes, that's why we used to be the ones that would anoint or crown the monarchs. That's right, yeah. So when... Yeah, when the Archbishop of Canterbury finally crowns your successor, um, that'll be, that's the symbol. That's when the oil goes on and the anointment. It, it symbolises that Arwen flowing, which is the, the, the responsibility to speak and tell the truth. <clears throat> yeah. Yes, but the truth, yeah. Well, that's why you need druids. You see, it's hard to find. Even Pontius Pilate asked Christ, he said, what is the truth? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> It's a shame Jesus didn't actually take Pilate aside and have a proper chat with him, actually, about that. Mm. Yeah, there is one book on Jesus I strongly recommend, The Foreigner by Desmond Stewart, um, <clears throat> A Search for the First Century Jesus. Yeah, he also wrote a biography of Herzl, the great Jewish leader. Desmond Stewart, I don't know if you ever met him. Um, yeah, he reckons Jesus spent time studying in Alexandria, which is a very interesting... Yeah, I think it's true, because I think he was a universalist thinker. And that's why the mob didn't like him. The nationalist, xenophobic, you know, Jews are best people. And yeah, I mean, the irony is the, the word Jew actually wasn't even around in Jesus' time. It just meant someone from the tribe of Judah. Well, Jesus was the king of all 12 tribes, not just Judah. Yeah, I mean, he was from that temple tradition which, which took, that took Yahweh seriously. And that went back orally to the same place that Moses got his visioning from. Yeah. Well, that's right. I've tried to explain in my book, The Kabbalah Runes, how the Druid insight thing goes back to the same root as the Kabbalah, which is the origin of, of the Hebrew faith and of Christianity. Yeah. And your, aunt, your um, you know, namesake, Elizabeth, she knew all this stuff. So did John the Baptist. Yeah. I know. <laughs> it's... Uh, yeah, the conversations that must have taken place between Mary and Elizabeth would have been amazing to sit in. We've only got snippets of them in the Gospel. Well, that's why I say we should put in the Gnostic Gospels into the Queen Elizabeth Bible. And, and James wouldn't mind. James is fine with this because they didn't exist in his day. And the Enoch books. Yeah, set up a commission at Oxford and Cambridge. I'd be happy to sit on it. You know, I'm just a scholar. And, and we'll come up with a draft of an extended Bible, which, which the Anglican Commission, the Anglican Church, should, should have. Because if the Anglican Church is a living, vibrant, you know, growing thing, which I believe it is, 
Yeah, my daughter was baptised recently in Pusey House. Isn't that wonderful? Yes, and she's, she's just gone off to Burma. Yeah, that's the one. Yeah, she's an Anglican. And, but she only, you know, she wants the truth, right? <clears throat> These kids that, that, you know, are in the Anglican church now doing PhDs and stuff, they want the real truth, not, not to be fobbed off with old wives' tales. So let them have a bigger Bible with these other books in. Let them have the fruits of 100 years, 200 years of scholarship. Otherwise, why have we got professors of theology? Yes, I've known quite a few professors of theology. <laughs> well, you know, <laughs> I'd be deeply honoured if I was offered that chair, but, uh, you know, I, I, would, I, I couldn't do it if I had to stop all my peace work, you see. I'd, of course, I'd love the Regis Chair of Divinity. Yeah, I don't care. Even Cambridge would do. But I, I would have to be faithful to the lights of my understanding of God. Yes, in the Whiteheadian sense, God is a process. You, you, yeah, thank God I can talk to somebody that actually understands. Yeah, that's the point I'll be making in Principia Religio Mathematica. That was Whitehead's you know, insight, really. I know, we lost him to America. He went to Harvard, but really he was at London for a while. Yeah, this is the problem, you see. The clever ones often leave Britain. I, I'm loyal, you see, Your Majesty. I would come back and, and teach again. Yeah, I, I'm trying desperately to save your realm and your country. But only on the basis of truth and non-violence. Only Dharma and Ahimsa will save our country. Because we've been fed so many lies for so long by so many powers out there that mean harm. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for, for listening, um, <clears throat> and um, it's been a pleasure and a, a real honour to speak with you. Uh, thank you so much, and, and um, yeah, happy happy Christmas and happy New Year, and, and please let this be a less bumpy year, as you said in your immortal phrase in your Christmas message this year. <sighs> Yes, and don't forget to send me those secretaries, please. Yeah, that's that's my plea. Right. Okay. Now I know that I know you're needed elsewhere, but thank you so much for finding this time. It's been awesome. And um, yeah, yeah, my whole family send their love. Thank you so much. Goodbye. Gosh, well, look, my mind is reeling after that. I can't believe it, you know, like that was my queen. I'm. Thank you so much, Your Majesty. Um, I don't think I'm going to say any more because I'm going to let that sink in a bit and I'm going to pour a nice cup of tea. <laughs>